Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for February 6th. February 6th is the 37th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, with 328 days remaining until the end of the year, unless it's a leap year, in which case there are 329 days remaining to the end of the year. We've been looking at words that arrive to English with a built-in definite article. Today's word is albatross. Albatross is a noun that refers to any members of the Diomedeidae family of large web-footed seabirds. It can also mean a persistent and wearisome burden, like guilt, for example. I'll tell you about that in a minute, though. The origin of this word seems to have come from Portuguese or Spanish alcatraz, from Arabic al-gatas, which meant diver, which referred to a kind of sea eagle. Now about that definition regarding the burden. <laughs> This comes from a poem, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, a lyrical ballad by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. In this poem, a mariner, or sailor, killed an albatross for no apparent reason, just because he could, I guess. And after that, the ship that he was traveling on began to experience all manner of difficulty. His shipmates were sure that it was because he had killed the albatross, so they made him wear it around his neck like a necklace. Now, albatrosses are not small birds, so this was a burden to wear, this big heavy bird, plus it was dead, so it began to stink. <laughs> Burdens of that sort often do. <laughs> There's lots more to this story, but I think we've pretty well covered the concept of the symbology of an albatross as a burden one might carry, so we'll let it go at that for now. I'd like to take a moment to remind you that links to my research are included in the show notes to encourage you to hit that like button, to share this video with others, subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, we're going to roll on into the history during the Revolutionary War on February 6, 1778, when the United States and France signed a treaty wherein France recognized the United States as an independent nation. In 1788, Massachusetts became the sixth state to ratify the United States Constitution. On February 6th of 1820, 86 freed U.S. slaves, sponsored by the American Colonization Society, departed New York to start a settlement in present-day Liberia. In 1851, the largest Australian bushfires in a populous region in recorded history took place in the state of Victoria. The Dalton Gang committed its first train robbery on February 6, 1891. And my goodness, this is the birthday of baseball great Babe Ruth, born February 6, 1895. February 6, 1911 is the birthday of our 40th president, Ronald Reagan. February 6, 1917 is the birthday of that little hot pepper Hungarian-American actress and socialite, Zsa Zsa Gabor. We talked about her, I believe, in December when she died. She was quite a character, Zsa Zsa Gabor. Now I want to just take a moment to mention that there sure were a lot of notables with birthdays on February 6th. This video would be very much longer if I read just the ones that I recognized. Just know that there were a lot of media and entertainment people born on February 6th throughout the years. On February 6th, 1917, a German submarine sunk a U.S. passenger steamer ship called the California off the coast of Ireland. On February 6th, 1928, a woman arrived in the United States claiming to be Anastasia Romanoff, the youngest daughter of the murdered Russian Tsar Nicholas II. Now, there's a long, detailed, and very interesting story that goes along with this, but the long story short version is that she was not. John Steinbeck's book of Mice and Men was published on February 6, 1937. On February 6, 1943, Mussolini fired his son-in-law as head of Italy's foreign ministry and took the job over himself. Mussolini was one ruthless dude. He ended up having the that that son-in-law 
executed. I haven't read all the way into the story, but I'm sure that didn't make his daughter very happy. There's the price of doing business with despots. On February 6, 1952, King George VI of Great Britain and Northern Ireland died. Now he had two daughters, Princess Elizabeth being the oldest, who was next in line to succeed him. We'll talk more about Elizabeth when she has a birthday later in the year and again during the coronation ceremony, but she actually became queen on this day when her father died. In 1959, Jack Kilby of Texas Instruments filed the first patent for an integrated circuit. February 6, 1978, the blizzard of 1978, one of the worst nor'easters in New England history, hit the region with sustained winds of 65 miles an hour and snowfall of over four inches an hour. That had one mean snowstorm. On February 6, 1985, Ronald Reagan announced in that year's State of the Union address some key concepts of his foreign policy, which came to be known as the Reagan Doctrine. On February 6 of 1988, Michael Jordan made his signature slam dunk from the free throw line, inspiring Air Jordan and the Jumpman logo. Tennis great Arthur Ashe died on February 6, 1993. He'd had a history of heart disease and it is believed that he contracted the HIV virus from a tainted blood transfusion during a 1983 heart surgery. He was 49 at the time of his passing. Austrian superstar Falco, perhaps best known for a song called Rock Me Amadeus, died on February 6, 1998, when his rental car was struck by a bus while he was on vacation. I've placed a link to the aforementioned song in the show notes if you'd like to hear it again, or if you're young enough to hear it for the first time. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Remember that links to my research are included in the show notes. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And feel free to share this video around. And while you're here, you might as well check out my other channel, 8 Susquehanna. There's a link in the show notes to that. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> I would like to take a moment to encourage you to like that share button. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Watch your mouth. What is wrong with my mouth today? <laughs> so many mistakes. Oh, come on now. <clears throat> Where were we? <laughs> All right, do that again. There's a good girl. Good girl. I don't know how all that's going to go together or if it's even going to make it to the video. We'll just see. That's not going to go. Probably cut all that out. That'll all be laying on the cutting room floor. <laughs> So I'll just do that whole thing over. <laughs> that might not make it into the video. We'll see. Changing it up. <laughs>